Hello everyone and welcome down to episode number 21 of the Down South Photo Show. Uh, we're 21, Cam. Amazing. We're, we're 21 episodes old. We we get to we get the keys to something. I was going to say, do we get the key to the photography kingdom? We must do. With me, Brendan Waits, and my good friend, who I've already spoken to but haven't introduced yet, down in Tasmania, Cameron Blake. Good evening, Cameron. Good evening, Mr. Waits. How are you today? Very, very, very well. Um, let's start off with our backgrounds. I want to know mm. where your background is. It looks. I think I've seen shots from there before from you, but can you please fill us yes. all in? I'm coming live from the Franklin River. No, I'm not. Um, no. This is uh, one of the sections of the Franklin River called the Arenibus, uh, which I think is some sort of mythology, Greek mythology kind of word for peaceful place. Let or... me, I'm just going to pop you in full screen. There you go. Yeah. Now you, you know... yeah uh, so this is the Arenibus. Yeah, it's like, it means peaceful and tranquil. Uh, river or piece of place or something like that. So it's got some meaning to it. I probably should know. Uh, but this was taken in the last trip in December last year. So it's almost been a year since I've been down. Uh, so I thought, you know, I'm heading off uh, very, very soon. I thought it would be appropriate to uh, put this beautiful part of the river in my backdrop. So, and you're on a jetty somewhere. By the last one, mate. Well, the reason I thought I would throw this one up, so I'm going to get myself out. Look at this. Look, look, technology. What? Uh, oh, oh no! Now you can see my now you can see my framing. Look at all there, those if I put it there, there we go. That f so I took that photo one hour ago. Oh, that's cool. So I thought. So I went for a bike ride. Yeah. Over to Point Lonsdale, yeah. and of course, I know how much you love my iPhone. So my iPhone goes in the back pocket of my cycling jersey and comes with me. So when I get when I ride the pushy out on those in places like that, I can rip it out and take a cool photo. So this is an iPhone shot? That is an iPhone 13 Pro shot, yes. Wow. That's uh, edited in Snapseed. On the go when you're on your bike? Did you no, I, I, I took the shot and then got home because just for something different, Victoria is about to cop a heap of rain again. Oh, I thought you were going to say another lockdown. Oh, Jeepers, don't swear. No, oh, no, 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 no. It's no. um, it's going to be, uh, apparently we're in for an inch of rain tonight into tomorrow morning, <sniffs> followed up on Saturday night by the same. So yeah. we've got flood see, warnings and blah, blah, blah. I see your inch of rain and your yes. terrible weather, and I raise you uh, a little bit more than that. So I am heading down the Franklin River. We depart this Saturday in two days' time. <laughs> Saturday's looking okay-ish. Sunday is snow down to 500 metres in Tasmania, which is okay because the river's not 500 metres high. It's probably a couple hundred metres above sea level, maybe a bit more. But Monday, just to kick off the week, snow down to 200 metres. So we Goodness may me. very well be rafting down a, a wild river in either flood or torrential snow, which I'm okay. not really looking forward to that, to be honest. No, so you're going to be back on the podcast next week because that trip's going to take like... 24 yeah. hours. Yeah, well, it's usually an eight-day trip. We could be back by the end of Saturday. <laughs> um, yeah, wow, so okay. Who knows? Right. But I know last that's, year... So that's, do you raft through that your background there? Is that... Yeah, we do. Yeah, you go down that. That's part of the Franklin River. So, right. so watch we, out for those big jagged rocks there. Yeah, there's lots of jagged rocks everywhere along mm. this river. And there is boulders, the si and I kid you not, there is boulders the size of houses on this river um, that rapids go under or over and around and... All that kind of jazz. It's a it's a magical experience. But having said that, last year, the trip we went on in December, the the group, the very last group of group before us, waited out seven days in the same camp because it flooded for seven days. So they Aww. waited out, then they had to go. So we're hoping it's not going to do that. There, there's a fair bit of rain coming on Sunday, but it seems to ease off and taper off as we get going. So. Yep. Fingers crossed uh, we can come, come back and tell some amazing stories of the trip we've had. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Mate, that sounds awesome. And a question without notice, um, just a brief rundown of the gear that you're taking with in terms I, of photography, of course. This is the million-dollar question, and we haven't prepared this, but I Ooh. don't know. I do not know wow. what camera to take. So Ooh. as you know, I'm a bit of a camera whore. I've got a few different systems I like. I've recently mm -hmm. sold my Fuji GFX100 to... Uh, one of my customers in Canberra, so Dave, who's now the owner of a beautiful camera. Um, Good purchase, with, Dave. Great camera. It is a great camera. It's a great purchase. I've got my Olympus system, which I'm recording on now, and I know that system can live up to the Franklin River. Um, our gear goes into Pelican cases, so little bomb-proof cases, 
Uh, they're 90% waterproofish. Um, they sometimes get a little bit of moisture in them, but not nothing too major. But I know the Olympus weatherproofing system is A1. It's top of, top of the class. Um, but I went and bought myself another camera with the proceeds of the GFX camera. Can you stop camera. it? Um, How many I'm, cameras do you need? I, I don't know. It's, it's a problem. I've got a problem, I think. What did you buy? Um, I actually bought a camera that I've already owned before, which I sold for the GFX 100. Now I've rebought again. So I've now bought the Leica M10R, which Lovely. is a beautiful, beautiful camera. It's very old school way of shooting, manual focus, rangefinder type of thing. Rangefinder, yep. Uh, it's very cool, but I do must admit I do really like the lenses. I've got a 21mm lens for it, a 50mm lens and a 90mm lens, and they're smaller, even smaller than the Olympus system. But my only concern is, is the weatherproofing. The, the Leica has a weatherproofing on the camera, but the lenses I'm not too sure about. Uh, and the, the expensiveness, the, the, the actual value of the camera, I don't really want to be making an insurance claim at yeah. the end of that trip. So yeah. to answer your question, I still don't know what I'm going to take. I think right. I'll probably push towards the side of caution and take the Olympus system where I can, um, you know, can be quite confident the weatherproofing is going to hold up. Having said that, though, you know, the question would be, well, what's the difference between the Leica and the Olympus? Why would you, why would you take one over the other? Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the reason I'd take one over the other is that the, the Leica is a 40 odd megapixel camera full frame. The Olympus is at four thirds or the OM system is a four thirds. Um, but it would be purely mainly just for the lens quality out of the Leica to try and get some really, really nice high resolution shots that I can probably put in a gallery or, or sell online at big sizes. So I'd be shooting on this trip to try and get some images that I can sell, um, quite big printed. So, but yeah, it's a real tricky one because uh, we're a little bit limited for size as well. You obviously you can't take. Of course, yeah. I was going to say you must be limited by how many kilos of gear you can take. Uh, kilos aren't so much the problem. Uh, it's just more the size, the physical size bulk, things. Yeah. Bulk, yeah. Uh, the last trip I went on, there was a, a another guest who took a slab of beer with him. <laughs> oh, okay. So, well, because the, the raft, yeah, the raft does all the all the heavy lifting because it takes everything down the river for you, but. Yep. So I won't tell you what I end up taking until I come back with some photos and I'll let you know. Oh, but watch, watch this space. It's yeah, a cliffhanger. I'd, love, I'd love to take the Leica because I've taken every camera I've owned. I've taken I've taken down this river. I've taken film cameras. I've taken the Olympus cameras. I've taken the GFX cameras. So it's almost like a passage of my cameras that they've got to go down and do this river first. So right. Yeah. We'll see. But uh, okay. yeah, it's really exciting. Uh, I've got three other guests coming. Well, three of my customers coming. Uh, we had a lot more, obviously, based on borders, but. I know one of them is bringing a Sony A7 III. Um, she's got that all worked out, and she's bringing a 2470 and a macro lens, which would be good. Uh, and then I'm not too sure. I think the other one's got a Canon, and I think the other one's got maybe a Canon as well. So, yeah, it should be great fun. Uh, hopefully the weather gods shine a little bit on us and uh, see what happens. So you'll be um, obviously teaching these people as you go sort of thing um yeah and what's the deal you, you camp up each night or there's yeah spots? so unlike the overland track this doesn't have any platforms or any camp platforms or drop pit tools or anything like that so it's all bush camping or on the side of the river uh, especially like behind us here you walk out to the the other side and it goes up a little path into the little forest area where you can camp so it's all uh there's no tents we camp on the tarps um, we have really thick mattresses and good sized sleeping bags. It's, it's a really, really off the grid experience, but incredible. It's still the best thing I've ever done. Yeah. Um, so each, uh, each day we'll obviously start in the morning. We'll do some photography along the river. You get some beautiful, moody, misty, cloudy mornings on the, on the river, obviously with the river and the eddies and things like that, you can create, uh, some nice things. Oh, it, it sounds like a photographer's paradise. It looks like a yeah. photographer's paradise. Oh, it's, it's nuts. And the color in the water is amazing. The rock formation is amazing. <sighs> There's hewn pines. The one of the oldest trees in the world is all riddled down this river. So we, we sort of do a session every morning and every evening, and then at lunchtime we'll grab the cameras off the boat, and then in between that you're enjoying the amazing, exhilarating fun of rafting down the Franklin hmm. River. So hmm, it, you're actually rafting the Franklin, which is you know nuts. I mean, it's, yeah, world heritage, right? World heritage. Um, it's you know it's the river that Peter Dombrowskis made famous with his Rock Island Bend shot. Uh, there's lots of moments along there where you just know this is made for photographers. Um, you know, it's not unusual. Like you, especially this trip, it's going to be good. Like you'll be paddling around the river, just cruising along. Everyone's talking in the boat, 
and you'll turn behind you and there's like a massive, you know, 200 meter waterfall dropping off a cliff into a ravine, into the river. Like it just, every, every corner's got a surprise and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then we get some really cool wildlife, platypus, wedge-tailed eagles, sea eagles, spotted eastern quolls. Oh, I've got this thing. The sea eagle has become like my white whale. Like I don't think I'm ever going to get it, but um, my wife and I went on a boat cruise uh, out of Malacuta. Uh, mm. in far eastern Victoria, like the farthest eastern you can go in Victoria before you're in New South Wales. Mm. And um, sea eagles all over the place. And, of course, I've got that. I want that shot. I want the sea eagle hitting the water, getting a yeah. fish off the water. I mean, yeah. who doesn't? it's legendary. Who doesn't want a yeah. shot like that? Yeah. And, man, they were everywhere. They're up in the trees. They're flying around. Not one of them came close to <laughs> we yeah, were, yeah. It was so frustrating. But it was so cool to see. But that's that's definitely one of, as I say, one of my white whales that I want to tick off in terms of wildlife, which I don't do enough of. I no. think wildlife photography is awesome. I, I got but, a really good shot on the Franklin a couple of years back. We had a, a white-bellied sea eagle follow us down. It literally followed us for like three or four days. We'd get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. It was in the same tree it sta stopped at. And then it would just fly ahead a kilometre, wait for us to come past, go again. And we got down into the, the Franklin runs into the Gordon River, which is runs into Strawn and Macquarie Harbour. And we got down onto the Gordon River and this seagull finally made it back home. And in the tree, it's, its partner was in the tree, its mate. So there's these huge, two huge big seagulls sitting in this ancient tree, bucketing down rain. I, I luckily had a, a good lens on. I got a really good nice shot of them just sitting there in the rain together. Yeah. And just, an amazing, awesome. just amazing to watch. And... Yeah. Um, there's there's only about one or two man-made objects along the whole eight days of this trip. So you are literally off the grid. No phone reception, no nothing. You just uh, you're at one. The river's party. You you hear the river. You drink from the river. You you know you, you float on the river. It's it's incredible. So yeah, no, that sounds awesome. And uh, mm. w while you were speaking there, I mentally added it to my bucket list. So we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. get that done. We'll get that done at some point. That'd be that'd be mint. Yeah, um, absolutely. Also, oddly enough, while you were talking then, and sorry for being slightly distracted, I was listening, I promise. That's right. I may have already teed up our guest host for next week. Um, <laughs> That's brilliant. While it was, I can't, I'd love to say who, but I can't because they haven't 100% confirmed. They've just said they're a tentative yes at the moment. They're going to come back to me tomorrow. So I can't do, tell you who. Do, do, do I know them? You do, and uh, well, not personally, but you know of them, and okay, okay. I will tell you, Cam, when we go off air. And, Brilliant. Um, I can't wait we'll for that. Ep put it all over our socials. Uh, no, well, do, do as they, long as they don't do too good a job, right? Do they? I was going to say, do they like me? Because I don't want this episode just to be a complete hang shit uh, on Cam episode. They don't not like you. Okay, that's all right. That's all I need. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, they've never, the, they've never not, met you, so they're, uh, yeah. they're, not from, they're not from the west coast of Tassie, are they? No. Damn it! Damn it! Anyway, no, that sounds awesome. Yeah, that's exciting. No, no, no. It, what you're doing sounds awesome. That little yeah. teaser for the, our guest host next week could. Well, be how about how, how, how about this? How about you don't tell me, and I'll just find oh. out when I, when I get back. I'll just find out who it is. I'll okay. watch the I'll, I'll watch the episode like everyone else does, or listen to the episode without any idea who it's going to be. This is going to be a really, really heavy edit. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it already. <laughs> um, okay, so we know, Cam, you yeah. must be really excited about that trip. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped for you. Like, that's going to be brilliant. Yeah, thanks. Um, and you've also been out at your gallery at Richmond today. Um, I have. Getting yes. it all prepared? Yeah, we had a bit of a, I won't say a hiccup, a little bit of a, a slow down period. We had to wait for. It was a speed approved. bump. A speed bump. We had to wait for some uh, extra council approving in regards to the overall structure of how this gallery works and the Richmond Botanical Company out there and and the guys that own that. So we, we got the all clear of that uh, earlier this month, which was good. The council said, yeah, ten thumbs up. That's good. So we went out there today. We're going to start promoting it properly now. Uh, we'll probably look to do maybe an open day, like a proper sort of gallery opening or opening weekend. Uh, we'll probably wait until the borders open a bit more, obviously maximise what we can. Uh, so it might be early no, uh, early January once we get out of Christmas and all that kind of jazz. But So I went out there today, met with Luke, who's the other photographer I'm sharing with, Luke O'Brien Photography, and Mark, who I know listens to this show because he listened to episode 19 before I came out there today. So g'day, Mark. Hello, Mark. Yeah, Mark's a legend. And Mark is making his own frames. And by Jingo, by, by George, they are really really nice frames so 
we might awesome. have a we might have a one shop stop for printing, framing, and gallerying. That's yep. a word. Um, yep. Out in Richmond, so yeah, we just went out there. We just ticked off a few things we need to tick off, and we're ready and rocking to go. So um, very cool that you're going to have a fairly wholly Tasmanian made product. It is, yeah. That's um, it's one. You all of the, live the, there. You all photograph that area. You make the frames there. You're going to print the yep. stuff there. Yeah, that's great. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, that was one of our sort of mo- uh, uh, momentums, or sorry, not momentums, uh, motivation, motivators, motivators yes. for for doing it is that we wanted to try and you know just everything Tassie. So, um, so yeah, it's really exciting. So if you're in Richmond, Tasmania, 16 Bridge Road in Richmond, it's uh, the Rich- Richmond Botanical Company, uh, which is run by Mark's wife Kylie. They do candles and all different arts and craft stuff. It's I walked in today and it smelled like coffee. They do coffee candles. Oh, right. right. Yeah, really cool. Okay. Smells Coffee really candles. nice. So, yeah, that's all good. It's all it's all happening. We're, we're really happy that's, about it. That's very exciting, mate. That's great. Mm. Um, we've been hard at work at Camera and Photo, both stores, Ocean Grove and Torquay this week. It's been really good. I feel like the all the stops are starting to come out now and things yeah. are... The funny thing is, though, now that we're back in full swing, it's like... Oh man, was this what I used to do for a living? Like, it, yeah, the, yeah. The, the the last two years have been so hazy and almost dreamlike, and then yeah. there's this there's level of lethargy that we're just everyone's starting to come out of, and yeah. getting back to the rhythm of um, actual work. I mean, I I got home tonight, I was pooped um, yeah. mentally, like just whew, like you're on the whole time, and and the day yeah. the days fly, don't the hours just fly? It's ridiculous. I I, I looked up and it was three p.m. I'm like, what? Yeah, and I hadn't eaten, and you know. I was about seven coffees in, but that's that's okay. Yeah. Speaking of how coffee. how how are customers going? They're all happy to be there. They're they're yeah lots yeah we yeah yeah it's good. Um, uh, one of the massive upshots of of the pandemic was how much more traction my website got. Of course, everyone went online and as we did to start the podcast and all that sort of stuff. And um, the online orders have just continued on. Like people have just carried them through. Little difference now is though they select pick up in store a lot more rather than home yeah. delivery because yeah. they actually want to come out and see yeah. what we do and and it, maybe buy a frame and all that sort of stuff so it's yeah, cool. you know it's been it's been really good like that but as i say it's been it's like i don't remember it ever being this busy but maybe it actually was and i'm just not used to it so yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it's, it's well you great. can't sit it's on great. the couch forever mate i know i know um I know. <laughs> <laughs> believe me i know what, what, what's, what's my excuse then that that poor that poor bike tonight it was groaning and oh god get off me um <laughs> so a couple of topics that we want to talk about tonight i mean we're already almost 20 minutes in but that's fine um a little bit of news came out today about the aipp's cam the australian institute yeah. of professional photographers can you it fill did. our listeners in please uh, i can um so um big news out of the aipp today yes like probably doesn't get any bigger than that they're actually closing it's ending at the whole aipp family community structure organization company the whole thing is grinding to a halt and stopping so um yeah there was an email sent out today to all members which i'm still a member of um and have been i think i've been a member for maybe 12 years or so so over definitely over 10 years um the email came out today from the national president that uh just based on the ongoing effects of everything, COVID, lack of members, uh, revenue turnover, entry to competitions, all that kind of, like a, just a combination of everything is just meant that it's not feasible to keep running the AIPP. So um, they've dropped a lot of members, which is sad. Uh, their state and, and national awards had you know, hardly any entries. Apparently they had very, very low numbers of entries into the awards. Um, and obviously without membership money and entry fees to competition, you just can't keep running it. So it's a sad, sad day. A lot of people, um, you know, AIPP has always had a bit of a yay or nay with people. Some people like it, some people don't. Uh, obviously the members are very passionate. There's a lot of volunteering involved with the AIPP. So that's, there's been a lot of free hours put in by people to try and keep it afloat, but looks like the crunch got too big and, uh, they've pulled the pin. So that means going forward, there is no technically no you know industry uh, level or industry standard for Australian professional photographers anymore. Um, they were backed by the ACCC, so this was an accredited kind of business. You know, if you were part of the AIPP, it meant that you ticked enough boxes to be accredited as a professional photographer. 
Um, so what that means for the industry going forward, maybe that means there's a lot more, you know, maybe the quality of work might drop or there's a lot more cowboys get involved who want to do sort of weddings or portraits or landscapes, whatever it might yeah, be. Yeah, I think, I think a couple of points need to be made. One is this is very fresh news. This is just literally is hours today. ago. Yeah, we, today. Cam learnt and I learnt of this through Cam. Um, so there'll be obviously a bit of dust settling on it all and we'll find out more probably – you know, the, the reasons and stuff a little more as things unfold. Yeah. But also it's going to create a vacuum for perhaps a new um, AIPP equivalent to to, yeah. to rise from the ashes sort of things. Do you think that mm. is something that might happen? Look, I don't know. I think... Um, Do you think it's really needed? I, I don't know. I think when I, when I joined, it's changed a lot. And, you know, companies change and evolve based on situations of... of you know what's going on with the economy and and you know all the COVID stuff. But when I joined, you needed to be ticked off by another member who was a professional photographer. You used to have to submit a, a portfolio, and you know used to have to go through quite a lot of hoops to become a member. That that sort of relaxed quite a lot in the last few years, where it was pretty much anyone could join to be a member. Okay, and, and do you think that was to the detriment of the AIPP? Look, I, I think I don't think so, it's to like the their standards. Their standards dropped a little. I don't think the standards dropped, but I think the their reputation as the the benchmark of photographers in Australia lowered because they would that it appeared to me they were just letting anyone in to yeah. you know if, yeah. if it meant membership money coming in then obviously yeah. that meant they were trying to keep afloat so you know they tried to do the right thing as a business and try to get more membership and drive the membership yeah. higher yeah um, but I think the the overall standard or the overall I guess standing or the stature of the AIPP in the community dropped because I think people who might have been professionals for a while went, well, hang on a sec, I, I had to do this, 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 and this to join and have needed to do this for so many years. Now all I need is an ABN and $400 to join. Like, how, how are we monitoring this? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so whether or not another, another thing like this can rise from the ashes, maybe, I don't know. Um, but the thing is, well, like photography is so popular now. Like everyone's got a camera. Everyone's trying to make a buck out of it. Um, whether or not they need it to be there, I don't know. Like you don't hear too many horror stories now of people ripping people off, or you know that you know that classic horror wedding story where all the photos got lost, or yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. Know. And, and therefore no one to turn to to back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I understand that, and particularly yeah. no one to turn to. On the other side of the coin, if a professional gets ripped off by a client or something like that, that's so, right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, it's it is it's very interesting times. Um, yeah, I, I was quite surprised that that, that, yeah. is, that, that has well, happened, but obviously I, I, um, they couldn't keep it going. No, I, I know, I know they've been you know on the rocks a little while. Like back in two thousand eighteen, they had another sort of a bit of a hiccup, and there was a lot of talk that it wasn't going to survive, and they they cut a lot of corners, and they they I think they completely dissolved their committee or their their board and started again and um and it just doesn't look like it's picked up from there and then obviously yeah. chuck COVID, COVID on top of that you know? yeah 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 um, yeah so yeah it's a sad day there's like i said there's a lot of a lot of people that have invested for many years i, I can imagine be quite upset about it um but having said that I've, I've been online already tonight and there's the other side of the coin where people are you know that was a waste of money and they, you know they never did anything and it was you know everyone can be a professional with an abn and like hmm. you know all that sort of bitchiness as well so yeah like i said this is literally hours old it's happened today uh the dust will settle a bit you know I, i've got no doubt that there'll be some in the aipp who will try and resurrect it somehow uh or like i said try and branch off and do something separate yeah yep. whether or not whether or not that grabs traction or not i don't know but um yeah, look, I, I, I've never been, a, I haven't been involved. Well, actually, I must admit, I, I was involved pretty heavily. I was the president of the Tasmanian side of the AIPP for three years. I forgot all about that. Um, and we tried, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I forgot all about that. Um, and we tried very, myself and the committee I had, we tried really, really hard to get events going and trying to raise revenue memberships and things like that. And it was a hard job and unpaid. It was all volunteer. Um so, but apart from that, like I've been to competitions, I'm an accredited AIPP photographer, um, I've won some silver awards and bronze awards or whatever they are, or different different styles of awards through there. Um, but yeah, it wasn't for everyone, but it is sad, it's it's a big hole that's going to get needed to be filled, um, and uh, it'll be interesting, next, next yeah, few months. I think, um, 
my take on the whole thing was I've never been involved with the AIPP, never wanted to become a member, never even threw my head in the ring at all. Mm. Um, but that's not for any one particular reason. I just sort of looked at it and thought, well, I don't, you know, I'm a, I'm a landscape photographer pretty much wholly and solely. I shot a couple of weddings. I wasn't, I wasn't really dealing on a, on a, um, you know, like doing commissions for people or anything like that. I was yeah. just doing my own thing and selling to the public who were seeing my work. Yeah. Um, I didn't, from the get go, I didn't see the benefit for me. Um, yeah. And to me, it was just another 400 bucks that I could keep myself, <laughs> use better yeah. myself yeah. rather than doing yeah. that. So um, as I say, nothing against our OPPs. I'm sure, they're, I'm sure they were a wonderful organization that, that helped their members out a lot in the past, yeah. but obviously it's got to a point where it's a little bit tough to, to keep going. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think. um, Yeah, I think. Like when I joined, the reason I joined was more around there. There was quite a really good setup of professional development when you joined. Uh, So there was lots of sort of workshops and lots of uh, you know online learnings and lots of get-togethers and things like that. So it was quite good in that way. That that dropped off, like especially here in Tassie. Like I, I must admit, I I haven't heard from the, the recent or the current committee for month, like years. Yeah. Uh, I, I have no idea what's going on down here in the AIPP. The communication's not there at all. Yeah. Uh, you know, there might be obviously a lot more be going on behind the scenes because of that. But yeah, so when I joined, it was really good to develop yourself as, as a professional. Um, but obviously, that's uh, gone a bit to the wayside and where, where we are today. So. Yep. So stay oh, tuned, like it, you said. Mm. Yeah, watch this space. We'll see what comes of it, and we'll uh, talk about it here on the Down South Photo Show. Maybe we can start our own thing, Cam. The DSPS... The de- the Down um, South Professional Photography Group of the DSPPS, legends. the DSPPS, the Down South Professional Photography Show. You People. love your peas. Last week you did five peas or four peas. I did. Pride no, preparation f- prevents piss poor performance. That's six, I think. Anyway, it's enough. Whatever. I should have been more prepared. You should have. Um, been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving right along, um, I'm excited. Um, I know that drones don't float your boat as much as they probably used to or one or i don't know yeah dji have finally after three years announced a replacement for the mavic 2 guess what it's called the mavic 3 oh how did you you googled that come on no, no i'm just i'm just a genius you are there's no question <laughs> about that so dji have launched the mavic 3 and it looks freaking amazing i love this kind of tech i like the it's, you're you're, it's, a, you're a tech head, aren't you? No, I do. I like it. I'm I'm really hesitant to buy it, but I love reading about it, and I love the all the YouTubers and stuff. Of course, you know they DJI have got their five or six YouTubers that they send the gear to. They yeah. do pre prepare all the videos, and then on when the embargo ends and the launch date comes, they put them up. iPhoneo yeah. is awesome. I really like his. Um, I don't know if you've seen Who, who's him. That, who's that one? iPhoneo iPhone, I don't think I've heard of iPhone. Do. I'm going to send you the link. You will not watch any other YouTuber after you're onto this guy. He's out of yeah. California and he is brilliant. He's uh, uh, the way he uses the equipment to show off the equipment, if you know what I mean, because yeah. it, it's yeah, all yeah. normally photographic stuff. Yeah. Um, he started just reviewing iPhones, but he's branched out into a lot of photog- photographic equipment and yeah. drones. So um, yeah, okay. check him out. I'll put a link in the description to his channel. Yeah, um, okay. So, yeah, it, it, we know that it, it's a drone, it flies, yada, yada, whatever. That's awesome, of course, but everyone on this channel is going to be interested in the camera. So there's been some massive changes. They have basically taken the old camera and binned it and gone with a brand new one. They are is still that, rocking the Hasselblad glass. Say, is it a Hasselblad? They are still rocking Fun. the Hasselblad glass. Um, is it made by Hasselblad? Of course, it's not made by Hasselblad. It's designed by Hasselblad. Uh, and then they license it out to DJI to use their the um, the glass. So it's got the Hasselblad coatings on it, the reflective coatings, all that sort of stuff, yep. which is pretty cool, really, to think you can put that kind of glass in the sky. But yep. the big change is the sensor. So they have gone, drum roll please, to the same sensor as in an OM system camera. They have gone micro four thirds on us, on our oh, yeah. asses, which is well, um, very cool. Let's, let's just hold up there a second because uh, on the Inspire 2 that I had, the DJI mm-hmm. Inspire 2, it mm-hmm. used a four-thirds micro sensor Correct. Correct. So I used, to, I used to be able to put my Olympus lenses on the gimbal. 
That's correct. So they've obviously been a fan of the four thirds for some time now, which is awesome. But now yeah. it's in now it's in this drone. Yeah. So what they've done is they've taken the Inspire Two, which was a beast. You know, it's a big, big mm. old thing, and they have miniaturized it all down into the form factor of the Mavic, which is yes. pretty damn awesome. So a few quick specs for the tech heads out there. It's got an eighty-four degree field of view, which is great. So it's basically. Um, in its native lens, so you can't change the lenses. However, I'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 got a fixed lens of twenty four millimeter wide angle, which is That's pretty good. good but yep. it does come with a wide angle adapter. So you can actually screw on an adapter to the front. It actually comes with it in the box. You know, it's not an extra that you have to buy, right. which I think is really cool. Yep. Which from memory pushes it out to closer to an eighteen mm in right. thirty five mm speak. So which is pretty good. Eighteen mm yep. uh, in the air, as I say. I really like that it's got an aperture of f2.8 to f11 in a native yep. format, but that can also yep. be pushed out to f22, but it does start at f2.8, which is yep. very, very cool. So you can uh, do it'll a, a, auroras? Yes, you could, absolutely. You can shoot auroras because you can shoot out to, uh, for still images, out to 6400 ISO, which is pretty imagine, cool. Imagine that, imagine that, an aurora shot from a drone. Well, these drones... Even, even though it's illegal to fly at night, but it's okay. At night. If it's a calm night, you know I yeah. want to try it. Yeah, next to Aurora, saying. you know I'm going to have a crack at this. Well, um, there's two things I reckon you've got going against you, though, with shooting an Aurora with the drone. One, it's got to be calm, and that's rare yeah. when Aurora seems around. As you said the other night, it seems to be a bit breezy. Yeah. Uh, but I've seen drone shots with seven-second exposures. And yeah, I've, I've seen the wave yeah. shots, you know, the ones looking straight Pretty down. Pretty amazing. Yeah, like I, I've got the Mavic 2 Pro. Sorry to cut in on your specs there. I've no, got the Mavic, Mavic 2 Pro, and I've done some fairly late afternoon shots with that where it's been like a second or so um the noise is fixable but the sharpness has been acceptable so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah who knows that could be cool. well so the sensor being micro four thirds and 20 megapixel means it's pretty much the same sensor that's in a om system em1 mark three it's basically yeah. the same it is in fact the same sensor yeah um which is pretty awesome i think um, mm, as I cool. say, for a drone, that's very, very cool. So they've stepped up from the one-inch sensor in the Mavic 2 to now a micro four-thirds, which, yeah. physically speaking, 20% bigger, roughly. So um, yeah. very, very cool. I love it. A yeah. uh, couple of other little speckies while I'm going through. Obviously, it's going to shoot a RAW file, which we love. Um, yeah. I, the RAW files I get out of my drone now are brilliant. So yeah. uh, plenty of editing capabilities and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's got auto-exposure bracketing. It's got all the cool stuff like you'd expect from a very high-end compact camera yeah. because as I say you can't take the lens off and put another one on no. however they have released two versions one is the Mavic 3 and one is the Mavic 3 Cine and the Cine version is $7,000 um, but it it what it does so, what, what was that again $7. it shoots um, uh, 5.1k Apple Pro Pro res now basically what that means is it, it it's it's like movie, a movie, really, movie really high end movie camera in the air. So, um, no, so I, I don't think the Inspire is making a comeback after this. Like, this, this, they've basically put all their eggs into one model, into the Mavic, I think. And right. yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. So, the, the Mavic 2 Cine has two lenses it has the, the video lens and the still lens in it as well. So, right. which is pretty nuts. But they both run through that micro four thirds sensor. Okay. So, cool. very, very yep. cool. Um, yep. And as I say, not cheap. So the basic Mavic 3, I think, is going to set you back close to four and a half grand. I think it's four two. I think maybe is five it? with the Fly More combo, right. and then the Cine version, seven thousand one hundred and ninety nine dollars in Australian money. So uh, it is up there. Um, I, I don't think, think I'll I be think buying one anytime soon. The other cool thing is it can zoom. It's got a um, it's got yep. a four times digital zoom in it now, which is pretty cool. Um, last time around, they released two versions: the Mavic Two and the Mavic Two Zoom. And yep. the Mavic Two Zoom, they might as well just uh, it didn't sell. Um, they they yeah, it was useless. Um, so yeah, you lots want, of you cool want, stuff. Do you, want, do you want some good news? Yes. The Mavic Three is three thousand and ninety nine dollars. Oh, okay. I was way off. But. It's three thousand ninety nine dollars, but the Fly More combo, which gives you extra batteries and all that kind of jazz, yep, yep. is is probably about four and a half. Yeah, that's what and, I might be looking then, at. Yep. Yeah, and then the 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 Cine, what, how do you say it again? Cine, Cine, Cine. 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 That that's seven thousand two hundred dollars. So yes. base models, base models, 
$3,100. Yep. So from yeah. a photographic standpoint, the base model Mavic 3 would be awesome. But if yeah. you're a videographer, the Cine yeah. will really blow your hair back. So yeah. well, maybe I should buy one. You should. Buy two. <laughs> we'll have one each. We'll race them. <laughs> Cross the best, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> the range has been extended to something no. like... Oh, yes. The uh, range... So the flight time is now 48 minutes. Isn't that the best... Wasn't that the best segue of all time then? I didn't even well mean done. it, but... <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, 48-minute battery life and a top speed of 76 kilometres an hour. Now, work that out. Could it get... A, it could get... It could probably just get, get to... King to Island. King Island, yeah. recharge, Flinders yeah. Island, recharge, <laughs> and skip across. <laughs> That would be pretty cool, know. actually. How's, I'd how's like to see that. How's, how's the uh, range for the aerial on it? Go. Yeah, I'm just trying to find that. Um, well, that would have to be. That maximum. can't be right, but it's telling me here that it's 30 kilometers. I can. I've just seen that 30 kilometers. Are you kidding me? They used to be only five kilometers at max. Mate, there's no point. They, it has to be 700 meters because after that you can't see it, and in Australia you have to keep your drone in sight. Uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah. So that's a bit pointless, isn't it? It is pointless. I don't know why they do that. Well, but I would counter that by saying if you're on private property. So if you know someone who's got a 30 square kilometer property. <laughs> buy, buy my drone for Christmas. Go get yourself a little DJI Mavic 3 and uh, get amongst it. So, yeah, exciting. Yeah. Really cool. Oh, and what the, I can't believe they've done this in the cine mode. A one terabyte SSD drive on board. So they'll give me about two minutes of recording at 8K. 5.1K in Apple ProRes. Yeah, that's right. It's going to yeah, record right. for about eight minutes. Eight but minutes. Um, but it's, of course, it's, you can it, you can memory card it as well, of course. But it, it's, it is impressive but, stats, isn't it, really? It's got a terabyte for, for SSD drive. hard drive built into it. That's pretty incredible. I mean, imagine crashing that into the ocean. <laughs> yeah. That'd um, be me. That'd be my is, first flight. I'd take it down here off Lonnie. Straight over that lighthouse and out and there into it. the... Yeah. Yeah, you're you're down that up. way, by the way. That's, you're it'll, down there. It'll, it'll wash up on the beaches of Devonport a couple of weeks yeah, later. Yeah, that's right. Exactly, yeah. with my footage. So it's yeah. a 4,000 by 3. I'm looking at the still stuff here. Yes. Because um, that's all I care about. So it does yep. still range 100 ISO to 6,400 ISO. That's pretty standard. Shutter speed, electronic shutter speed from 8 seconds up to 1 8 thousandth of a second. And max, max, maximum image size is 5,300 by 4,000, which is pretty good. Huge. Does, uh, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's impressive. Yeah, it is. It's 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 um, chock full of kit, and I guess that's why it took them three years to get this thing out there, because uh, yeah. worth waiting for. And by all the early reviews that I've been seeing, uh, they all rate it very highly. However, yeah. they haven't, uh, the pre-production review models didn't have the latest firmware on, which hasn't yet been released. So they weren't actually uh, able so to show us the ProRes stuff uh, video-wise, so but all better. the... Oh, yeah, it'll, it'll definitely get better. So there you go, folks. If you're uh, interested in getting yourself a new drone, yep. that has just been announced, which, of course, means the Mavic 2 will drop in price and you'll be able to get it. And I think the Mavic 2 is awesome. I flew mine on the weekend and still got brilliant footage out of it. Absolutely love that drone. That's very, very cool. So uh, this week we have a deer cam. We do. Uh, which is great. We're, um, we're getting a few deer cams sent in. We really like them. We can only do I, one a week, but so sorry if we haven't got to yours yet, but we will get to it. I didn't I didn't see this one pop through. It got through to good. people without me. Yeah, that's good, that's good. the good thing about a deer cam because it's uh, yeah. almost like a questions without notice kind of section. Deer cam. It is. Last week, you guys mentioned a few female landscape photographers. Uh, that was at 19, so... We did. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. Uh, I am looking to grow that number, and I am wanting to know what camera to buy. I think we've had a similar question like this before, but that's okay. I have a budget of only $400, and I am 17 years old. P.S. Love the show and your YouTube channel, Kelsey from Eagle Hawk, Victoria. Eagle Hawk? I used Just to go. Near Bendigo. Oh, that way. Not Eagle. Oh, hang on. What did I used to go on the train station? What's There's a station on the Hurst Bridge line. It's not Eagle Hawk, is it? I think it is Eagle no. Hawk. No, it's not. Not that Eagle, Eagle Hawk? Eagle Hawk is a suburb of Bendigo. All oh, right. Okay. Well, <coughs> thanks for the question, uh, Kelsey. Kelsey. Chelsea. Kelsey. Kelsey. Kelsey from. Um, the awesome question, and one that you do get um, a fair bit actually about what camera to buy. Actually, I actually had an email from a lady this week, almost identical question, 
uh, with a bit bigger budget. So, um, look, it's, it's, it is a lot of people seem to think these days that you just got to buy the most expensive camera you can get, or you know, bigger or better, more expensive is better. But that that's not necessarily true. Um, I think we, as we've mentioned on this show a couple of times, you know, like Brendan's got cameras that are 125 years old, and he's he's still using them. He it's does. True. So he. So the good thing about digital photography is that it's forever evolving, and we've just been talking about the Mavic Three replacing the Mavic Two and how much you know technology's changed. But for four hundred dollars, my bet would be that you're definitely gonna have to go secondhand uh, if you want to get. I'm assuming that she wants to get uh, a DSLR, so one with interchangeable lenses versus a compact camera, which we would suggest you do. Um, but I, I'd be looking at places like online, so whether or not it's Gumtree or eBay. Uh, anywhere where they can get secondhand gear, you can pick that up. Um, I think as a word of advice that I usually give to people wanting to buy entry-level cameras or, or newer cameras is try and stick to some of the major brands like Canon and Nikon, as much as it hurts me to say, even Olympus as well. Um, because the reason is because the lenses from 10 years ago or five years ago are still the same lenses that you can use on today's cameras. So for $400, I'd be looking at something like a Canon or Nikon entry-level I don't know exactly what model number they would be, um, but I reckon you'd probably be getting something like maybe a 16 megapixel or 24 megapixel camera, which is more than enough for what you need to do. Well, I can um, help you there because I've just cool. done a quick uh, eBay search while you were talking, and I have found, so I shoot with the Nikon D5100. 5100, yep. Right, so I've just found one on eBay with an 18 to 55 kit lens, fine, no problems at all, for $425 delivered. Yep, yep, there you go. So, and that, that that's, um, I guess, when you're looking to start off in landscape photography, having a nice camera is great. You know, having the best camera your bunny can buy is even better, but it's more about the functionality of the camera. So you want to be able to shoot in manual mode or aperture priority mode or program mode or whichever mode you want to shoot in. You want to be able to have manual and autofocus so you can do astro stuff at night with manual focus and you know, other stuff during the day. Um, things like focus points and all that jazz don't really come into play too much with landscape photography. So you're not looking for something with 250,000 focus points. You know, if it's only got 16 focus points, then that's more than enough. You generally only need one for landscape. Um, yeah, so the main thing would be, I, I'd be saying check on eBay like Brendan's done um, or check on, on Gumtree as well. Um, by all means, feel free to shoot us an email at cam at tasphoto.com.au if you want some more ideas or if you've found a couple of cameras that you want us maybe to check out, more than happy to send us an email with what you find and we can we can sort of tick it off to say it's good or not. Uh, I think we're trustworthy enough for that, Brendan. Very, very uh, happy to help out with that kind of stuff. If anyone out there is listening as well, sorry, I'm just doing a bit more of a search on eBay to see what else is out there. Um, yeah. Cameras, I mean, I haven't gone on to golf clubs or anything like that. Um, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. That's, that'll come. Um, yeah, by all means, drop us a line. I'm happy to, to, to... Now, I've just found... This is... this Kelsey, this is for you. I've just found a Canon EOS 700D, which is another camera that I own, with yeah. the 10 to 22 lens. So the landscape lens. Are you selling your camera? It's 500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. No, you can't have my camera. It's 500 bucks. I mean, okay, your budget was 400 yeah. Maybe your parents can flick you the extra hundy because this is this would be great. Um, yeah, it's got the ten to twenty two, and I always tell people if they're keen in landscape to go as wide as they can afford. Um, yeah. Even if that means scaling back the quality of the body, as Cam was saying, maybe going for a slightly cheaper body, and that's totally fine. Yeah. But yeah. Canon seven hundred D with the ten to twenty two and the eighteen to fifty five kit lens, they're throwing that in as well. So if you'll be able to shoot portraits and your friend's wedding, and everyone will want to hire yeah. you as a photographer before you know it. But um, yeah. Yeah. Really cool part of Victoria to take up landscape photography. Bit more of a challenge. You're not going to get Tasmanian landscapes. And you're not going to get beachy stuff like this. But no. there's areas around Bendigo that are awesome. There's some really cool national parks not far away. Yeah. There's places like Lake Epilock. That's a really good spot. Yeah, all kinds and of stuff. Lake, so Lake, Lake Nianga. Nianga, I think you pronounce Nianga? it. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking you, at. You're working out. You weren't convinced that Eagle Hawk was where it was, were you? You didn't believe well, me. You had to look no, at that train line. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure there's an Eagle Hawk station as well. No, no, I don't no, know. No. I, only, I, only, I only went on that train line six million <laughs> times. I think I remember. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, Kelsey, yeah, that's there, that's um, there a, that's there is a station. It's near Bendigo. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Did your train go via Bendigo? I, wow. I, I, I wonder why your trip to work took seven hours. Um, what? 
what the hell is that station? <laughs> that was a if really anyone, good. If any, if, I was going to say sorry. If anyone knows the station on the Hurstbridge line, that's <laughs> e- Eagle Eagle oh, Eagle Mont. There you go. Eagle right. Mont. Why didn't sorry I know that. that? Yeah. Why that's do you know that? Because um, but yeah, that great question. Um, and yep. it's a regular question that we get. Yep. Um, but yeah, you don't. Uh, if that's your budget, you know, you know, put that budget into your camera as much as you can. Get what you can for your money, and then. You know, I, I always think, you know, again, cameras are cameras. Like that's the knowledge and understanding of how to do things and the practice uh, that's invaluable. So if you can get yourself a camera in your hand, get out there and practice, and the more you shoot, the more you learn, um, and the better you get. So absolutely awesome. If you've got a deer cam question, feel free to drop us a line at the links and whatever we do, and you know all that stuff. Put a comment yeah, below. Like, send gee, us an email. You sold, you sold that well. Should I redo it? No, it's fine. No, but, uh, no. If you've got a dear Cam question, just email it to cam at tasphoto.com.au. Thank you, drop it on. Drop it in the comments below uh, or send us a message on the socials at Thank- down, down South Photo Show. Thanks for getting the show back on the straight and narrow. I, I appreciate say, it. I do maybe get this, animated maybe this, maybe this, maybe this, Maybe this guest host next week will actually host. <laughs> well, I've just actually realized that the guest host said we normally record on a Thursday night. And of course, next Thursday night, I've got a photography workshop at my Torquay store. So anyway, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll, we'll, we'll squeeze it in somewhere, I'm sure. I might even record from my Torquay shop after the workshop finishes. That'd be a good idea. I can do that in the mobile world in which we live. Um, okay, so that is very, very close to the end of the podcast. Now, we all know what you've got coming up this week, Cam. Very exciting. What have you, good what luck. Have you got? With everything. Thank you. Yes. Uh, hope wish it all goes me, wish, smoothly for you. Wish me well. If uh, if you want to have some entertainment, uh, I don't know. We think we're going to send this out as I'm on the trip. Is that right? This, this episode this, will go out. This episode is going to go live Sunday night because we've crammed in two this week. So right. we're going to go Sunday night for this one just to annoy everyone and have no yeah, schedule whatsoever. It. Let's put them out of their misery and do something else. But <laughs> P.S. I would suggest... 220 subscribers. We've closed in on 220 subscribers. Just You, you know. know what? Just between you and I, because no one else is listening. I yes. reckon we're getting a bit of traction on this show because I'm okay. starting to see a bit of a peak of comments and feedback and awesomeness from our listeners. So I like it. Again, like if you it. if you haven't liked and subscribed, do that. If you haven't shared it to your mates, do that um, because we're getting getting on with it. We're on episode 21. We'll be doing 50 episodes before you know. It. Oh, absolutely. But what what I was going to say is, yes. if you're sitting here Sunday night listening to this Sunday, whatever the date is. Mm-hmm. And it's bucketing rain outside. Jump on the bomb or weather zone or windy weather and go check out the radar and temperature for Lake St. Clair in Tasmania because that's probably our closest little town to where we'll be rafting to. And just sit back in your chair and have a chuckle as to what I might be experiencing. Yeah. So <laughs> it's I don't been. Think it's going to be great. <laughs> It's been great knowing you, Cam, and it's been excellent running the uh, podcast with you for the last yeah. 20 weeks. And the I guest I, that I've got lined up next week is clearly your replacement, but that's okay. Clearly, that's fine. Clearly, you know, we, we move on. You know, it's like, it's like um, you know, you, you, you've, set the, you've laid a good foundation. Yeah. You know, I've set the bar relatively medium, but that's the, okay. This, the show wouldn't be the same without you. That's not going to happen. You're going to have a great time and be very yeah. successful. Awesome. For me, it is business as usual. We are on the downhill run to Christmas, so um, things are really starting to ramp up there. I have got um, canvas jobs coming out of my canvas jobs um, as, as a little pan around before. <laughs> yeah. I'll see yeah, if I say, I'll do it again. I'll see if I can, if you can see. Oh, is it going? There they are. See them yeah. coming through there? Yeah, All of those little things frames. there need canvas stretched onto them at some point and guess who does all that with these very bare hands so um yep that'll be me um doing that for the next uh five weeks six weeks whenever yeah. christmas is so looking you must forward be to it. uh you must be quietly happy though with the fact that you're back open and people are coming in and people are buying presents for friends and family and loved ones like that must be I'm, a great feeling i'm wrapped because I mean, you know, without wanting to sound smug or anything, I feel like my business has survived a global pandemic. Mm. And having said that, I know there was loads that didn't, and I feel yep. really sorry for those people that couldn't yep. make a go of it through COVID. So I feel lucky and privileged. Having said that, I did put a lot of work into it, so I'm I'm kind of yeah. proud that you're really, the, you know, you're it's really paying. Well, so. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, this is this is me. I know this is going to be me for the rest of my days. So, uh, and I love what I do. So it's awesome. And, and I, 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 I'm not a big, I'm not a gambling man much, but I would suggest that Sally's really happy that you're no longer sitting around the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
Yes, Mrs. Camera and photo is wrapped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, well, she's yeah. back to work as well, full time as well. Well, pretty much full time. Yeah. So we're all in the yeah. same boat. And the kids are back at school, and it's just great. No, it's it's, it's excellent. It's really good. We're we're very, very happy that it's all getting back to normal. So. Yeah. Um, that's been the show Cam have a great week we will Thanks, catch you guys you on the Down South Photo Show for episode 22 with possibly a guest host next week cheerio sounds good cowabunga oh he went with Ooh. a cowabunga goodness <laughs> mate <laughs> I've been thinking of what, what can I say <laughs> yeah nice mm. one mate thank you that's recording start <laughs>